We've had a lot of memorable debuts on this program. We've never had someone's phone die right before the interview started. Deron Wynn, oh my gosh, bro. Wh- way to make a, a memorable appearance debut on this show. Well done. I'm so sorry, bro. I just got back, and on the way back, I, I, we just landed in San Jose, and uh, on the way back, uh, uh, the person's car was in, like, we had, like, a, one of the car charges or whatever, and it was, like, not charging my phone, bro. And I was like, wow, this would happen right now. It's all good. Well, I appreciate uh, Luis Pena for hooking it up. What a good yeah, friend. Yeah, 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 my boy. Uh, congratulations, Duran. What a big performance. What a, what a big opportunity for you. I said, I don't know if you heard it, I feel like you were the biggest winner on Saturday, even bigger than Tito, even bigger than Golden Boy, because you were fighting the co-main. Everyone was waiting for the main event. You seized the moment. There's a lot of buzz surrounding your team, surrounding Daniel Cormier, you being a protege of his, and, 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 and I think you really came out with flying colors. Do you agree with all yeah. of that? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. I uh, I knew it was uh, my my. It was going to be like my coming out party. You know, this was de- definitely the most exposure I was ever going to get, and I knew I had to, like you said, seize the moment, bro. So, uh, you know, I, I'm ready. I, I've uh, I've competed at a high level for a long time in wrestling, so I wasn't like like you know uh, you know. There's a saying is like seize the moment, don't let the moment seize you. You know, mm-hmm. and so like I I knew what I had to do uh, to perform that night and, and to you know, like kind of steal the show. So uh, I just went out there. I, I trusted in my training. Uh, I trusted my camp. I trust in, you know, everybody who supports me and stuff like that. And with, with, with being able to do that, man, it, it allows me to go out there and just, just let them fly, you know? You've competed in big stages in wrestling, never in MMA quite like this. What was it like for you? Forum, Tito Chuck, De La Hoya, all that stuff. What was it like? It was amazing, bro. I, uh, you know, I didn't know, like, Right before we were about to walk out, you know, I, like, made myself look at the crowd. And, like, before I, like, got to the cage, I made myself look at the crowd. I, like, took some deep breaths. And I, I think I've wrestled in front of that many people, but, but obviously I've never fought. And it's so much different. It's so much a di- a different feeling because the worst thing that, that could happen to you in wrestling is you might get pinned or something, you know? Yeah. But out here, I mean, you get your head knocked off in front of everybody. So um, it was actually, I love it. I love being able to do something like that of my entire life, uh, ever since I was a kid, wrestling the state finals, stuff like that, being in the spotlight, it's like, I love that. I always come, I, I always come to play when, when, when I got the spotlight on me. So uh, I knew I was going to be ready, bro. I, I, knew, I knew that what, what happened Saturday night was going to happen. I honestly thought I was going to finish him, but, uh, but he's a tough dude, man. Are you mad that you didn't continue your, your streak of finishing fights in the first round? I'm, I am, because... Uh, dude, I hit him hard a couple times in the first round, too. And that's the biggest thing that I, I knew I had to stay patient because I know I have good power, and my boxing is actually pretty decent at this point in my career. And um, I knew if I stayed patient and 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 could try to connect on him early, I, I, I thought just from him being in so many wars and stuff like that that maybe I could put him away. But it was good for me, man, especially now if we, we sign with like a big promotion or something like that. Now I have the experience that I went into a, a war with with a veteran guy who's been in the cage with a lot of really good guys, you know? Mm. So, um, so this was good for me. It was probably better that I, that I didn't put him away, that I, that I had to fight the three fives, you know? How tall are you, Duran? Honestly, bro? Yes, honestly. <laughs> uh, I, dude, I'm honestly like 5'5". Five 5'5"? Five. Five five. Wow, okay, because uh, Tapology has you listed as 5'8", but I'm not buying that. No, I'm like 5'5", five five, bro, maybe 5'6", with shoes on. Okay, what are you doing fighting at 205? Um, I'm just big. I, I, I'm thick. Like, I walk around like 225 pounds. Wow. I've always been thick like this my entire life, and I've always like, wrestled at higher weights. Like, when I wrestled on the uh, international circuit, I wrestled 97 kilos, and it was at, like 213 pounds. You know, I wrestled the biggest guys, in the, uh, some absolute monsters uh, throughout the world. And so I... Um, I don't know, I've always been big, and I, I'm, I'm, like, real dense and thick all the way throughout. So, um, so yeah, I, I, I just I just always been big, bro. <laughs> okay, so what's the ideal weight class for you? Because I can't imagine as you continue to progress in your career, you feel like if you get to the UFC or belt, 205 probably isn't the ideal weight class, right? No, uh, we're going to go down. Um, but, like, at this point in my career, it's so hard for me to get fights that we were – when we were trying to find a fight for this Golden Boy card, 
that we uh, we were just like, we'll take the fight at whatever, at 185 or 205, whoever will fight me. Because, like, I, like, literally, like, I won't say any names, but, like, there were some really, like, high, high-level high guys who turned me down. And so it just... Uh, say it, say their we, names, Duran. Don't be shy. Say their uh, names. Put them on blast. Uh, I'm not saying their names. Bro. Why are you protecting them? <laughs> they didn't want to give you an opportunity. Why are you protecting them? Bro, I had, like, a couple previous, like, uh, Bellator uh, world champions, like Emmanuel Newton, uh, Brandon Halsey, guys like that. I think Brandon Halsey was actually going to sign the contract if Lawler didn't. But, like, some high-level guys, man, like, I cannot find a, a fight for anything. So, um, yeah, you know, eventually I'm going to get down to 185 for sure, 100%. I, I, I'm there. And obviously, you know, in an ideal world, I could go down to 170, but I just don't know how that's going to work, bro. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm way thicker than a lot of people think. And it's like, it's in my leg, it's in my butt, stuff like that, you know? So, uh, yeah, and I always could be on a cleaner diet and slim down and stuff like that. But, I, I, you know, I've always just, you know, performed a, a big like this. So um, I'm very comfortable there. And, you know, obviously Tom is a, a, a small 205-er, but... Um, you know, I like, dude, I spar DC, bro. I spar Kane. I spar, you know, I spar Rockhold. I spar all these guys. So it's like, I, I, I think that the thing that will help me out a lot at 185 is, which, um, you know, Tom kind of showed it, is I think that a lot of 85ers won't be able to withstand my power. And I think I'll put a lot of people away with that. And then the 205ers can. And obviously, in the top 10 in the world, um, you know, those guys are big, bro. Like, I, I trust me, I 100% do not plan on saying it 205, and I do plan on dropping. And I saw that there, a lot of people were trying to say that on social media, like, no way he can say it 205, and don't worry. We don't plan on it. We just wanted to get a fight in, bro. Uh, the funny thing is, is that who am I to tell you that you should be moving down? Because the guy you train with, DC, has made a career out of fighting, you know, uh, guys who are bigger than him, everyone telling him that he's too big, that he should be losing weight, and things are working out just fine for him. So, you know, do you continue to do your thing? I was just curious if that was in the cards for you. Now, you fought in May for Bellator. You seem to be the, 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 the prototypical Bellator fighter. You train out of AKA. You've got, you know, Bob Cook there, Dwayne Zinkin managing you. Um, you're, you're a wrestler. You're, you're, the, you're the prototypical Scott Coker fighter. How did they not scoop you up, or did they try and you said no? Um, no, they didn't try. Um, you know, I, I think we just signed a one fight contract because we don't, we didn't know what we were going to do yet. You know what I mean? And and come and leading forward, we we just didn't know what we were going to do yet. So and then this Golden Boy thing came up, and uh, we dude, I knew about this Golden Boy thing in like the summer, bro. You know what I mean? Like I got like real, real, uh, real early news on it. So we kind of knew that this was going to come into play, and then after this fight, now we're really going to like put our feelers out there and, and si try to sign like you know maybe a three, four fight contract with somebody. So it's not both was not out of the question at all. But we just weren't sure which route we wanted to go yet. Okay. Uh, because I think that with my size and my explosiveness and stuff like that, and I didn't even like showcase any of my rhythm, my really, like, takedowns. You know, I'm real powerful. I can pick people up, slam them, stuff like that. I, we think that you know we'll, I'll be a crowd favorite. So. We we think that like maybe the UFC would be a good good um, a good avenue for me because uh, because of the fan base, you know. I think that uh, I think a lot of people like how I fight, and uh, that that'll help me make a name for myself. But uh, you know, uh, you know, options are on the table right now. So uh, we're, uh, we're 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 trying. I was just actually just talking to DC about it like thirty minutes ago about what we we're going to do. But um, and, and he's helping you, right? Talking. He's helping you yeah, do the, my, your career. He's my brother, bro. Like. That's my boy, man. That's my best friend, basically, for real. We coach wow. together. I, I freaking talk to him on the phone like 10 times a day. Like, I'll talk to this dude on the phone. Like, he, he, like I'll be going to the gym or I'll be going to, like, wrestling practice or something, and he's there, and he will stay on the phone with me until I get there. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, he's ridiculous, bro. But that's my boy, man. So I'm, like, one of the first fighters he actually manages as well. Okay. So he's helping me out, you know, with Bob. And, and I, I still got Bob and Dwayne. Uh, backing me as well, but but DC handles uh, a lot of that stuff for me too. And you and you coach the Gilroy High School wrestling team with him as well, right? Yes, yes, and the kids club. Wow, that's I amazing. Actually have, I, actually have, I actually have practice in like two hours. I got to go to the kids kids club tonight. And okay, so do you feel like the days of you know searching for a fight on the regional scene that's over with now that you you've proven your point that your next fight will be for a major promotion as part of a long term deal? 
yeah, I feel it's pretty self-explanatory. I uh, I think that I, I showed that I can compete uh, with with virtually anybody, and and you know I'm only going to get better, bro. So I'm excited for the future, and uh, yeah, I think I think that uh, within the next week or so, I'll uh, I'll definitely get an offer somewhere, and we'll probably we'll probably jump on it. And are you still going to compete in wrestling? Don't you have aspirations to do that next year? No, well, dude, I wrestle. I'm I leave Wednesday for Iowa. And I'm wrestling in this new, the, they do, they, it's like this new professional league. It's called the American Wrestling League. And I'm wrestling Friday. I'm wrestling an NCAA champion, Mike Machiavellio, uh, on Friday night. Uh, like for, it's like, it's like, it'd be like another fight night. You know what I mean? But it's, you know, it, it's, a, it's an avenue for, uh, for wrestlers, like guys like who are trying to make the Olympic team and, and world team and stuff like that, uh, guys to make more money. So I'm actually, yeah, I got, I'm, I'm jumping on a plane Wednesday and I'm wrestling a, a complete stud on Friday night. But but what about um, tournaments and things of that nature? Like if you sign a deal with the UFC, I can't imagine them wanting or allowing you to do that. No, yeah, I probably won't, bro. I, in, in all honesty, I was thinking about it. Uh, this could be my my last match ever. Oh wow! But, uh, but as my as like my career started, I just was. Uh, it, it was so much downtime. I came from a, a background of competing and always competing. You know, and everything was so slow because when I moved out here after Olympic trials in 2016, I had to start learning all these new skills, how to box, how to kick, how to jiu-jitsu, all that stuff. So there was so much downtime that I was like, man, I got to, I got to get, I got to stay active. So I would just keep jumping back into uh, tournaments. And then there were some new weight classes and stuff like that that came and, uh, and pr- you know, uh, produce some opportunities for me, just like this thing on Friday night. Um, uh, you know, so I jumped on it. And, and I, I'm I'm actually thrilled to do it again on Friday night, but uh, yeah, it's definitely coming to an end, bro. I um, you know I kind of officially retired after 2016, but like I said, I'm just uh, a competitor and I always have been. So uh, I, I wanted to jump back in there if I can and make a little extra money right now, you know. Uh-huh. Uh, we had Tito Ortiz on earlier in the show, and he said that he wants to continue Golden Boy MMA, not as a fighter, but he wants to be a part of the promotion. He thinks that there's you know, there, there, there's something there um, after what happened Saturday, the success of the show, in his words, and, and Golden Boy is interested. Have they talked to you about wanting to keep you around? I haven't talked to anybody from Golden Boy. Okay. In your mind, do you think that so, there's any chance? I mean, I, I think that it would be dumb to not. You right. Know I, mean? um, I could be kind of that, that trailblazer for them. Uh, you know, the start of the, the, the Golden Boy MMA, but I, mean, I could be that guy for them. I could be the face for them. Why not? You know what I mean? But, like, I mean, I, dude, I I talked to Oscar, like, one time, bro, this week. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I'm not, like, I know there's a lot of people listening, but it's like, I'm not, like, I'm not sitting here talking to anything, but it's like, come on, man, you, you didn't talk to me one time. Like, just one time? I, talk, I talked to him at the presser on Tuesday. That's it, bro. You didn't come say what's up before the fight. After the fight, nothing, bro. So it's just kind of like whatever. Like, all right, you know. He, I mean, that press, that presser was embarrassing, man. He didn't know what he was saying up there. Yeah, no, for sure, bro. I mean, it, dude, and I'll tell you, I uh, when he came up to me right before the presser started, it's the only time we we spoke at all, and I shook hands, and he looked over at my name tag to make sure who I was. Oh man, you know, background. He didn't know who I was. You know what I mean? So it was like, uh, I, I you know. I don't know how, you know, other people deal with these situations. And, you know, I wasn't butthurt or whatever. I, you know, I've always, at the end of the day, I know that my talents are going to um, speak for themselves. And uh, so I don't need this dude to brown nose me or nothing like that. I knew I was going to go out there and perform, and, and he was going to have to love me, you know. So so I'm not hurt at all. And, and they took care of me. And it was an awesome week. And, and I think it was a great event. And I'm very happy with, with, with how I... Um, how, how, for the most part, how I was treated. So, um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if they're going to pursue me or not, but I think they'd be dumb not to. Do you, do you care that people, like, I felt when, when you were on the mic, you sounded like DC, and I could see young DC when you're fighting. Like, do, do, you, do you mind those comparisons? Are you okay with that? I, I'm okay with it, bro. I really am. I, I wanted to try to get away from it because I want to be my own guy. I want to be my own, you know, DC, my own king. You know, right. I, I want to be my own Khabib. I, I, I want to be my own guy, you know? Like, of course, like my my nickname is not going to be Mini DC. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's, 
that's just not what it's going to be. And I definitely, I can't, I couldn't allow that anyway because the relationship in DCF, he will never uh, let me get into that. <laughs> uh, but um, but no, I like it, man, because in reality, he he he's virtually taught me about everything I know in this game right now, and I feel like if I can mimic him, um, you know, uh, at least to an extent, uh, I'm going to go a long a long way, bro. So. Oh, I'm okay with it. This is my boy, bro. I love that dude. He uh, he takes care of me, man. That's my boy. He he's known for his you know his speeches. He's 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 a great captain. Did he say anything to you in the locker room before you guys went out to fight? Dude, I sick video of him talking to me right before we walked out there. Wow. And I, he had me like he had me going. I have a sick video. It was like on my Instagram or something. I'll, man, I'll send it to you later. Please. Um, but it uh he talking to me. And he's like, he's like, kind of like, you know, explaining to me, um, you know, how, how this guy, you know, basically how this dude doesn't want it like, you know, like I want it. And, and he was just, uh, you know, pumping me up, bro. And it, you know, it was awesome. And yeah, and like, you know, when I was on the mic and stuff, you know, it's like, he's taught me how to, how to play the game too, you know? So I, I know I can't just be a fighter. I have to be a businessman and entertainer as well. So he's taught me these ways too, you know, just not, not only to be a fighter, just in other ways, to be prepared to speak. And, you know, I, I knew what I was going to say. I knew two weeks ago what I was going to say. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. After, after when I got on the mic. So, um, so it helps a lot. And I would be remiss before I, I, I let you go if I don't give a shout out to Violent Bob Ross, who is kind enough to give you uh, his phone for this interview. In fact, he, he, he just tweeted me somehow, unless he has a computer with him, that he needs his phone back. But it does seem like you two are very close, that he's uh, a nice a nice teammate and, and, and a wingman, if you will, for you. We're roommates. Roommates? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know you guys were roommates. <laughs> okay. That's where, that's where DC and Kane live as well. It's like right outside of San Jose. The garlic city gangsters. All right. Well, Duran, like I said, I thought you, you stole the show, my man. I thought you were the big story coming out of Saturday. I know that may sound crazy considering Tito Ortiz and Chuck Adelphi, but you said it on Tuesday that everyone was going to be talking about you afterwards. To me, you're the biggest takeaway from that event. And if I'm a promotion trying to find some young blood, some guys to really build up and, and be foundational pieces, you're one of those names that I'm coming after. So congratulations to you. I hope you get a big deal now. And I'm looking forward to seeing your career progress from here. Thanks, Ariel, man. It was an absolute pleasure being on the show, bro. I ho hopefully uh, we can get back on here soon, all right, man? Absolutely. Next time, just make sure your phone is charged, all right? I know, bro. I'm the worst. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Congrats again. All right. Yeah, yeah. There he is, Deron Wynn. Big win on Saturday. Not so big on Monday with his phone being not charged, but all good.